Good evening, it's Brian here at Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Kildare. Quick video just for anyone that's curious on these Honda Civics about the petrol versus diesel. This video is basically for anyone that is curious about petrol versus diesel in terms of a Honda Civic. And do you know what, for most cars in general, I'm gonna do a drive that's about 100 kilometers or so and it's encompassing back roads and it's encompassing a motorway. This is a one liter petrol car and I'm going to bring back the exact same Honda Civic except for it's diesel as well. And we'll just see how the fuel efficiency ends up. So if you want to know and you're curious about real life, in the real difference between petrol and diesel of the similar type of car, this video is gonna be useful for you. This video is not gonna be completely encompassing, but it is gonna give you a quick digest of how both cars compare. So starting off this car, I'm going to reset everything. So trip A, we're back as far as zero and we're going to get going. This journey basically is going to be clear over as far as a place called Taylorstown in Roscommon. And that is 97 or so kilometers. And as you can see, this is going to be a lot of back roads, but there is going to be an area here where we're also going to be using motorway. I'm not going to bore you to death with the actual journey itself, but uh, when I get over there, I'll give you an idea exactly how we've ended up in terms of fuel efficiency for the first hundred kilometers quick chat and then we're going to jump in the car in the diesel one and drive it back so this is the petrol one liter turbo starting off it probably is worth noting actually just for the video and i do apologize about the quality of the video because it is nighttime. Uh, back road at the moment what i mean by back road is the secondary route we're looking at somewhere in the region of around 80 kilometers an hour for that part once i get onto a national it's going to be 100 kilometers an hour once i get onto a motorway i'm going to be about 120 or a little bit over so i said it wouldn't do too much talking in the middle of the journey but then again that is a big fat lie anyone that knows me knows i can't shut up so at the moment to be fair 4.8 liters we've done 22 kilometers 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers in this petrol car begs the question why would you buy a diesel but anyway let's see how we go we have been on back roads it has been very economical driving so uh, let's continue on now that we've entered the motorway uh, you can see five liters per hundred kilometers is pretty much where we were but i reckon as we get on the motorway now there's going to be another maybe 30 kilometers of driving that's going to creep back up the other thing is i'm not going to quite cover 100 kilometers the customers decided to meet me a little bit ahead uh, but i still think we're going to cover 80 or 90 kilometers so let's see how we go just trying out a headrest mount i got over christmas anyway we are getting close to the end of the motorway run the car is pretty much still sitting at 5.1 liters I actually don't think the diesel car is going to beat this on the way back so it'll be interesting to see anyway i'll show you in a sec exactly where we've ended up in terms of uh, kilometers covered but uh, that kind of figure is going to be very hard to beat for a diesel at the end of that run so basically we've covered 85 kilometers cars averaging 5.1 liters there you go so that is 85 kilometers i'm going to do the exact same journey back now in a diesel car uh, so this is a petrol one 5.1 liters for 85 kilometers motorway and primary and secondary roads so I've switched into the customer's car. That's a really cool screensaver he has actually. I like that. Looks really well. Uh, anyway, so we are now at zero. We've zeroed the trip. So let's see how we get on on this car. We're going from motorway back down into the primary and secondary roads after that. This is really going to be a case of place your bets. I have no idea. The other car finished up 5.1. Mm, I reckon the diesel, if I drive it the same in the same conditions, maybe 4.7. But there's a bit of a calculation we'll have to do at the end just to see how much of a difference it makes to you. Uh, just left the motorway, we have 30 kilometers covered, currently 5.6 litres. Eh, I'm starting to think this diesel car would be able to claw it back all right. Um, but we still have another 50 kilometers to go, so it'll be interesting to see how this works. So 5.6 litres at the moment, um, hmm, it's going to be close. 60 kilometers in, well 58 kilometers in. <coughs> okay, the diesel car is starting to come through now all right, 4.8 litres, but it's not a massive difference. Um, so I said it was going to be around 4.7. I think we're going to end up probably around 4.5 in the end. Uh, but I'm going to do a calculation before we end just to see what the difference is in terms of consumption. And we also need to factor in the price of unleaded versus diesel at the time of the video, which is 30th of December 2019. Just coming back into Kildare, 85 kilometers covered, and we are sitting literally, it has just tricked onto 4.6. So it's 4.7 there for ages, now it's down to 4.6. So by the time we get to the garage, it's pretty much going to be it. So 4.6 for the diesel, 5.1 litres uh, per 100 kilometres for the petrol. That's half, um, sorry, that is, yeah, half a litre per 100 kilometre in the difference between the two cars over the same 85 kilometre journey.
and that is the end of our journey and it is 4.7 litres per hundred kilometres that actually came up 0.1 just as I was driving through the town there. 4.7 actually that's exactly what I said know your product but actually no look I have a bit of experience on these cars so I do know a bit about them. Uh, so that is less than half is 0.4 of a litre per hundred kilometre uh, in the difference so let's have a look at how the calculation works. And in fairness I think it is worth pointing out that this is not going to be the same for everyone this is just an example of what I did but it does give you some idea of how to think about petrol versus diesel. And obviously we need to know as well the cost of fuel. So it's one, just about 146 for unleaded right now, and it's just about 138 for diesel. So apologies about the uh, camera work there. I know it's dark, it just happened to be opportunistic because I was actually going that direction. I just thought it was a useful comparison to do. And the headrest mount, I'm not sure how well that works. So hopefully the pictures came out pretty okay, but we'll see just the picture of her, you're kind of uh, looking straight forward over the cockpit. Anyway, okay, what's the crack with figures? So if we have a look, as we saw then, the diesel car was 4.7 liters. The Petro car was 5.1 litres. If you think about 5.1 litres being 100%, uh, so basically 100 divided by 5.1 multiplied by 4.7, that brings that back up to about 92%, which is about 8%. That means the diesel car will consume 8% less fuel in a journey. So what I'm saying to you, basically, if you drive the car pretty regularly and you are, whatever kind of fuel usage you normally do, just extrapolate the whole thing. If you're looking at buying a Honda Civic, the diesel version is going to save you 8% in terms of fuel consumption. We still have to factor in the price of the fuel. Again, using the same logic for calculation, if the price of fuel, let's say 138 as a diesel car is 100%, that means then if you divide that by 100 divided by 138 multiplied by 146 that means you're 106 so you're going to use six you're going to pay six percent more for that fuel so what i'm saying to you then is you're going to save eight percent in the amount of fuel you use and off the fuel you do use then the price difference is going to be about six percent so six and eight say call it 14 percent that is your difference so for example if you're somebody that's got a distance where you spend about mm, say 40 quid a week on petrol the calculations then a diesel car is going to save you about six quid a week something like that so if you factor in the fact that the diesel car is 1600 euros more to buy that means then at six quid a week you are looking at 266 weeks which means that divide that's five years before you break even five years so the only thing that you can't account for here though is some people prefer a diesel car to drive the diesel. It's got 300 newton meters of torque, whereas the petrol one's got about 180 newton meters of torque. Different cars to drive, but not terribly different. Anyway, hopefully that demonstration's been useful. If there's any information you want about Hondas, Hyundai's or Mercedes or anything in general that we sell here, just give me a shout 086 843 1945. If you think the video's been useful, please do subscribe. If there's anything else you want me to cover, just in the comment section below, I'd be really happy to uh, help out. So thanks for taking time to watch.